Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another virtual tasting with the Scotchmont Whiskey Society. I'm Matt Bailey, National Ambassador, and I'm joined with our cellar master. As always, Andrew Derbidge, welcome. 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 Thank you. No, no, welcome. No, no, thank you. Um, good to see everyone. Yeah, good to see you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you've got your Mortal Magic Pack, uh, of course, you're welcome to get your tasting mat out and your glassware out. We recommend using Society glassware. It looks pretty good as well. And your menus. Ah. All ready to go in your box there. Um, I printed these off just an hour ago. It's still it's, warm. Yeah, yeah, it's still warm yeah, for the yeah, printer. It's like that new tasting smell. <laughs> Mark Teague, good to see you. Joel Rinaldi, good to see you. Uh, Whiskey's my jam, which is also Mark Teague. Are yeah. you watch, Are you watching three on three different uh, streams here, Mark? He's like he likes us in stereo. <laughs> if you've got if we can stream for one more source, you've got quadraphonic sound. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is our Mortal Magic virtual tasting. It's our April full virtual, and I appreciate you tuning in and um, and coming on this journey with us. We have five whiskies. You've got 30 mils of each in your um, sample bottles. Uh, so it's enough to share around with a friend, as Andrew and I do at every virtual. We don't have a set each. We share a set because there really is enough whiskey in those 30 mils to have a proper taste of each as we go along. And it's a taste, isn't it? That's what it's, it's a, all about. It's, it's, it's a taste. It's a taste. It's not, not a, a, a big drink session. It's a chance to, uh, to try it. Um, Five great whiskeys in the in the comfort of your own home. Is Andrew auditioning for Peaky Blinders? Is, is, uh, is the question that just funny came to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, I I was just saying about this. This is the official Scotchmont Whiskey Society vest. If you go to the vaults or, or any of the venues, they, they, they'll be wearing this. I, I picked up the last one, and um, it's a bit wintry. And I just thought, it is. you know, not a lot of insulation up there. So um, I make so, up for it with insulation. Yeah. Up here. Plus fine. the fact I've learned in the past that your light bulb is just there and comes right down on me. So, oh, right. So, that is true. Actually, that so is I, true. I, I just figured that with 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 that and and the slightly colder weather, I'd, I'd, I'd go for this and um, suss it out that way. So that, that's that's the reason for my apparel. And as we said earlier, um, if, if I don't wear a waistcoat to these things, uh, Robert Akers gets cranky at me. So no, that's um, true. That's true. Doctor Akers might get cranky. Doctor Akers might be tuning in with us. Uh, Darren Howie says, evening all, great to see the usual suspects. Great to see you too as well. Darren, thank you so much for tuning in. All the way up there in Cairns. Um, so great to see you. Um, shall we press on with the first whiskey? Shall we have a taste? Oh, I didn't turn up here to talk about fashion or not. <laughs> I'm hoping that's not the only Piggy Blinders reference we get. <laughs> um, yeah, pour a bit of that. Oh, you're going official top left corner too. Yeah, oh, I've wow. got the tasting mats out, so I might yeah. as well make, you make use of them. Um, now, this is not the first time tasting this one um, for myself. This has featured at a couple of events. This is 82.27. I'll bring up the, the, the list here so we can see what we're drinking. Pop that up on screen. Ooh. Hey, before we go any further, hmm. a, a toast in, in a way and also commiserations uh, particularly to Susie Tours, who I know must be devastated. Uh, Les McEwen for Bay City Rollers passed away. I did not know that. Now, I have a sneaky suspicion. I, I got a vague recollection. Susie telling me that the Bay City Rollers was the first rock concert she ever went to. You can call the Bay City Rollers rock pop concert then. Um, so, uh, you know, there are Scottish people uh, and fans all around the world mourning the, the death of, of Les, who was their lead singer, second lead singer, apparently. But, uh, so, yeah, Susie to, and to all, all people who were the Bay City Rollers fans, uh, this is for Les. This is for Les, and uh, you've inadvertently um, given Susie some sort of age and timeline here now. And she, not she, necessarily. She, she is timeless. I mean, she, I mean look, if, you, if you'd like Beethoven, you're not 300 years old. <laughs> okay, fair call, fair call. <laughs> Just quickly doing some maths on my head to work out if I was out by a century there. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, this whiskey... Uh, well, not this particular whiskey. <laughs> this whiskey. <laughs> this whiskey. No, well, not this particular one. But this distillery, Distillery 82, uh, for me, um, is actually quite a special distillery for me, not in terms of the spirit so much. I mean, I think the spirit's wonderful. It's a very um, high reflux stills. It's, all, it's, it's a very interesting distillery that hasn't got much of a single malt profile. But what I find interesting for me, the special part for me, is this was actually one of the first whiskeys I presented uh, Ever in a in a in a context of working in whiskey, and it was a it was the ten year old expression from this distillery, and uh, I got. Uh, How long ago was that? That would have been twenty thirteen ish, twelve. Because that that, uh, that distillery, this distillery, would not have had too many expressions available in the country then. I mean, they still don't. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I think they have even less now than they did yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they, I I think I had a, a ten and an eighteen in that range or something. Right. 
and the 10 was the standout. Uh, the, the, the spirit, a youthful spirit actually really stood out in this case. And uh, I got sort of lumped with all these um, spirits that didn't really have a, a home, for, uh, didn't have their own stand at a whiskey fair. And, I, uh, and this was one of them. And this was probably the most popular on my, on my stand next to, um, actually, I was also had a, no, no, I was, ah, that's wrong. Don't worry. It's Angus Dundee. It is Angus Dundee, yeah, yep. Yeah. So I visited this distillery in 2017 and uh, it wasn't open to visitors, but that is changing. They've, they've been building a visitor centre. Actually, it may have finished by now. Uh, they were building a new visitor centre, so they're going to get themselves on the on the tourist map. It's in the, the eastern highlands. It's it's not Speyside um, and it's, it's, it's north of Fife, at least, on the eastern side there. And it was always, um, if you had to pigeonhole this, this whiskey, its, its spirit was always known to have been very creamy, mm. really creamy whiskey. Yeah. And I had yeah. the, the pleasure and privilege of uh, going through their full lineup with the distillery manager. And their full lineup at that time, their full core range that's not available in every market, was about seven different expressions. So I'm here in this room with this guy in the course of about 20 minutes being taken through the 10 year old, the 12, the 15, the 17, the 19. And like so many of the distilleries, the difference was not just the age, but each particular expression had a different sort of cast treatment. So the difference between, say, the, you know, the 12 and the 15 was not just the extra three years, but the different um, yeah, one was had a, a different cast makeup. Mm. But I just remember uh, walking away from that tasting, staggering, to be honest, staggering away from that um, <laughs> tasting. <laughs> And thinking this is a really nice distillery, very old school, yeah, very uh, old school, style, yeah. um, and and their range was incredible. And so, I think you just touched on it in your introductory comments. It doesn't quite get the recognition of the plaudits it deserves. It doesn't, and it's it's been around for it's a distillery. Oh, it's, 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 it's a Victorian one. It's been around yeah. since the, the eighteen somethings. And it's yeah, it's it's more than two hundred years old, and it's not really had much in the way of a a, a single more presence ever. Really, mm. a great comment from Joel Rinaldi. Um, do you want to read that one? Yeah, after noticing this, I feel like I'm eating lemon cheesecake while in the, the super blue aisle of the hardware store. That's mixing and matching a couple of uh, a few, a few metaphors. Things there, but it's, it, no, but it's good. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's accurate. I'm certainly getting that lemon cheesecake. Mm. Absolutely. The, the, the lemon citrus is there, but also the, the, the creaminess and the sweetness uh, of the cheesecake. Mm. I'm going to taste. What are we sitting on proof here, actually? Yeah, it's up there, 63.9. Wow. Do you think this would have been filled into the cask at 63.4 or 5 and it's gone up? Or do you think it's one of those distilleries that is filled at a higher proof? Look, this is seven years ago. Um, by that stage, a lot of them had jumped up to the higher filling strengths of 68, 69. Uh, so we'll, mm. we'll assume that mm. uh, in the absence of any other knowledge. I, look, I'm not aware of too many distilleries in Scotland um, that, that gain strength mm. over time. No. Um, Get the vanilla ice cream on the palate. That's lovely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it with a bit of water. This one will certainly um, uh, wake your palate up, though. Will certainly spark your palate a bit here. Wow. Wow. That is outrageously flavoursome. I really like this. I really like this whiskey. This one is actually available now as well. To have this, it was. It's on the website. It was on our. It was in the April outturn. Hasn't that got so much going for it for a seven-year-old? It has a lot going for it for a seven-year-old. Oh, oh, man. I was recently on a, on a tasting panel for another organisation um, that was looking to um, do some in interesting things, and we tasted uh, some 13, 14, and 17-year-old whiskey, and they were all from – all we knew was they were refill casks and I suspect they were third or fourth fill. Mm. There was really little oak influence. There wasn't a lot of development. Was from a range of distilleries, and mm. some of them had great reputations. Mm -hmm. uh, and they did not nearly have as much flavour as this has gained in just seven years. So this is, uh, I mean, first of all, Urban Hogshead, and it's it's just screaming that, that mm. first of all influence. And, and, and this is what I love so much. This is absolutely um, killing that, uh, that stupid um, misconception out there that a whiskey's got to, be 10, 11, 12 years old to be ready or to be any good. Uh, this at just seven is, is such a great whiskey. Joel, your comment of lemon cheesecake, I get way more with a drop of water now that I've added it. It's just this, it just leaches out of the glass. It's a very, which is, that's very much a spirit driven note, I would, I would say. I mean, it's, it's, uh, as Andrew said, it's a very, um, it's a very creamy spirit. It's a very interesting spirit. I always get that sort of like 
typical sort of like lemon drops, pear drops kind of notes in their spirit. But uh, tasting this is um, the mouthfeel on alone is fantastic. I found once I added water, I'm not just getting the cheesecake, but the uh, the biscuity pastry base of the cheesecake. Mm, yeah, yeah. There's a lot going on for like. I mean, I, I think it's it's uh, the other thing that um, just piggybacking off your comment about the. People often overlook, you know, that thing about age statements, but also in our flavour profiling, young and sprightly. You, you assume mm. young and sprightly might not be as good as old and dignified. It's just different. They're just different flavour profiles. They just they carry different flavours. Yeah. Mm. I rate that. I rate that a lot. Well, and it's funny, like, anytime you do a tasting, um, the first cab off the rank is always, you know, we call it the, de the death seat. Mm. Um the, the the first the first whiskey is, has a tough gig. It, it's it's got to it's got to impress. It's got to um your palate hasn't really quite got into the zone yet. And um, oh, did I just see a photograph? That... Sorry. Yeah. yeah oh, sorry. Here, we go, here we go. Here we go. Did I take that? Is that one of mine? I don't think that's one of yours. No, I no. think it's uh it's, that's not one of mine either though. No. Okay. Um, what the hell was I saying then? Something about the fact that I was enjoying this. <laughs> Summary. It's enjoyable. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. enjoyable. Um, beautiful distillery, is yeah. it not? Oh yeah, it's yeah. a stunning distillery. It's it's um, it, it's yeah, it is that beautiful Victorian sort of looking distillery. I mean, there's a lot of distilleries in Scotland that have sort of that look, if you like. Kind of reminds me of Abelau and it's it's looking. Oh, it is a bit Abelauri. Yeah, it? The, the, the front the front of it and yeah, very nice. Oh look, the Glen Cadem Distillery. Oh, is that what it's called? That's what it's called. Oh wow, there's a sign there. there. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Still nil all. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say the name. <laughs> no, I was just describing. Oh, what I saw it. Just saw what the photo. The photo is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, um, thank, thank you, Paul's just reminded. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> I was talking about the first gram and the tasting. The fact that the yeah the first cab off the rank is has a tough gig, but this one uh, does it, it just delivers. That's, it does. That's, actually, I'd, I'd said put it suggest that the next whiskey's got a, a tough act to follow. Well, the next whiskey does actually really jump up in age, but falls in proof a fair bit. So it's a, it's a very different whiskey and also a different flavour profile and everything here. Thank you for prompting, prompting me, Paul. And uh, James, good evening. Good to see you. Mr V, hope you're well, mate. Good to see you the other week. Wow. So we've just been nosing. If you've just joined us, we are on the uh, Molten Magic April virtual, and that was uh, 82.27. And, I, and I'm, I'm agreeing with Andrew. That's a very enjoyable and very unique whiskey, that one. That's a, it is unique. It's, it's got that... Yeah. Wild lemon cheesecake thing going on. I, I know we're about to move on to the next one. Uh um, well, poor at least. But uh New York versus Cincinnati. Yes. What does that even yeah. mean? Well, obviously two American sporting teams, and I have no idea whether that's baseball or gridiron or whatever. But um There was something in the tasting notes about how um I thought there was something in the tasting notes about how the panel couldn't decide whether it was a New York or Cincinnati dram or something like that. Of course, our, our tasting panel in Edinburgh knows all sorts of things about US sports and follows it <laughs> very closely. So I would expect them to be across such matters. <laughs> very knowledgeable indeed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, Mark saying baseball reference. That, that was my guess. Uh, Joel says, uh, yeah, I, um, I found a story attitude to be one of the rare ones that does port cask well. Oh, oh Joel. I, it, <laughs> it's a good comment. It's a good comment. I, Not so many distilleries do port casks well. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, good call. Yeah. Yeah, wow. I don't know if I've ever had a port cask from that distillery attitude. I'm, I'm sure there have been. Obviously, there has been. I mean, you've tasted them, Joel, but I just I don't know if I've ever seen one. Yeah, there was definitely. Uh, I can't remember which one it was. Now it was the the seventeen or something in their lineup had a, a port finish. Mm. Oh, look, so we're going off topic for a little bit before we get stuck into this. But what are some of the distilleries that do do port cast maturation well in, in Scotland? Uh, Glen Morangie comes to mind. I think Glen Morangie have done some some wonderful ones. Belfini, and of course, Belvini Portwood. Yeah, 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 another good one. Um, I mean, you often see port. You do see port cast finishes. And they're often sort of on, on small run or limited release whiskies. Yeah. But I mean, regularly, I mean, yeah, Glenmorangie, uh, Balvenie, I'm trying to top of my head. That's the only two I can think of. And then you've got the, the Australian distilleries that do podcasts as well. Yes, that's, and, that's and, a, and a short list. And, 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 and lots of them. 
<laughs> We've just poured uh, 35.273. Bring that up on the screen there. 35.273, uh, flower arranging in the sunshine. There's a question I have for Andrew about this. Oh. It's you're, meant, you're, meant, you're meant to give me heads up about this. No, no, no heads up on this. Okay. Uh, what I'm fascinated by with this whiskey is that we talked before about 82.27 being a first fill cask. Yeah. After seven years, it's absorbed so much flavour. How does this go for 24 years? How does a first fill, it, it, I'm assuming it's quite a, it must have had it sort of like it's, it's come up and then it's just sort of levelled for a long time. Like, this, isn't like, this may not have tasted too much different as a 20-year-old, for instance. Yeah, well, I, I think uh, the answer to that lies clearly within the spirit. Mm. So you've got two distilleries making two very different types of new make spirit. Mm. And, and I, I don't want to be unkind here, but let's also just wind the clock back and think about what distillery 35 was 24 years ago when it was still playing very much second fiddle to Glen Morangy under the same owners group. Yep and was not really established as a single malt at the time. It was going into the... Glen Morangy owned this distillery at the time and they had a massive market in what was loosely termed the supermarket blend. Uh, so they were putting all the, the, the really cheap whiskies going into the Tesco's of, of the UK under the names of, you know, uh, Highland Stag and, um, you know, the Tar Tartan Queen and things like that. Uh, and so this distillery was... Glen Bag Park. Uh, yes, yeah, I didn't want to go there. But. So this, this distillery would have just been making a very simple um, spirit at the time and uh, as, as such uh, it, it could ride the journey out for 24 years in a first field cask. Oh, look, I'm, that's just my... Yeah, yeah no, I, I get it, know. I get it. Do you agree? Or I agree. Yeah, I, that, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just speculating. No, I, I mean, there's no, there's no easy answer to that. But it, it's, it's kind of one of those things that it's you don't often see whiskey of this age in a first fill. No, it's 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 unusual. Mm. It's, yeah, I, I, I'd agree with that. You see, you see, refill twenty four year old, twenty five year old whiskey, and yeah. um, uh, I, I think there's also a tremendous tremendous value for a twenty four year old whiskey as well. By the way, indeed. Tell them the price, son. Tell them the price. Three eighty-five. There you go. It's actually it's, again. It was an April outturn. It's available now, um, and it's, it's been online for a, a few weeks now. And there's still was, that, a few was that company national? That carpet company. I mean, I just made a reference to a very well-known <laughs> TV ad that was played no, ad nauseum no, no, no. on television in New South Wales. But if no one else, if people in other states, if that company didn't exist. Was then, it Frank Walker? Was it Frank Walker? It was the, the, the little carpet guys, the little doers. The little doers, that's and right. It was the father and son team. And at the end of the ad, the dad would say, tell them the price, son. <laughs> no, I remember the ad. I just couldn't remember who ran it. Yeah, right. Um, some great comments coming in here. Uh, James V says, yeah, that 82 jumped out of the blocks. And uh, Paul Leyland says that uh, Ben Rack has a few, it's in a few uh, podcasts. Yes, they do. They've re-racked a few things and, and put that, them in Okay. Uh, Paul, thank you for that. Ben Rea have had a few. Mm. Have they done them well? So, moving on to this whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything. You I didn't, didn't say anything. You, didn't. you also looked up at your ceiling. <laughs> oh, look, they look. They, 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 hey, let's, they let's look not they're very, They vary a, a lot over the years. Let's yes. be fair. Ben Nevis have put out some stunning whiskeys. Yes. A, 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 do, do, do not interpret... What I just said as a, as a knock on them. Oh, Ben Nevis. Ben Nevis. I thought he said Isn't Ben that... Reak. He said Ben Reak. Oh, he did too. Sorry, Ben Reak. No, Ben Nevis have got some great port casts. Yeah, well. yeah, They've yeah, done yeah. the white port, the white port twelve. And I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, Distillery thirty five have a port cask OB release too. Oh, they do. They do. Is that in their new uh, yeah, in the yes range? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of experimentation going on there now. Well, there now, I mean, there's lots of experimentation been going on there for ages. Truth be told, and this, this, the, the society has been lucky to bottle a lot of that. Mm. Uh, as we, I mean, over the years, I mean, we've, we've seen a lot of 35s from things like Chenin Blanc casks, from port casks, from virgin oak, from French oak, all sorts of things over the years uh, from 35. So experimentation was, I feel like we, we bought up a lot of it. Well, back, back in the day, the distillery was, I'm going to say back in the day, I'm talking late 90s, early 2000s, this distillery had a, a very widely available commercial expression that was called Chardonnay Mellow. So it was, it was a finish, but they, they used to mellow it in, in, in Chardonnay cask. And there used to be a 10-year-old Chardonnay. Yeah, that came along a bit later. Yeah, a bit later, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. 
Oh, I've just I'm loving that. that. I'm loving the that, nose that, on that, it. That, that is a walk through a flower garden for me. I'm, I'm strolling through someone's very well manicured. It's so delicate. Flower garden. Yeah, it's very so much so. delicate. It's just, it just dances on the nose. Z like kind of z uh, juicy, like juicy fruits on there. Tiny bit like, uh, I call it like shaved coconut. Yeah. The ABV on this is 51.8% and it is perfect. Mm. It is perfect. It's uh, it's coming in at a great depth of, of flavour. Uh, we don't often talk about alcohol burn. I think it's a very crude thing to talk about, but it is just hitting the right spot mm. for me. It's, it's it's fruit tingles on the palate. Yeah, it? It yeah. It bounces around. That's a very complex whiskey. Complex and Isn't it just? Whiskey. lovely. And as you go, having tasted, when I go back to the nose now, I'm just getting hints of violet crumble. Oh, wow. Yep. Real violet crumble. Not friggin' crunchy, okay? No, no, no. Please don't talk about crunchy. I'm going to go with Andrew on this one. Crunchy sucks. <laughs> it's all about violet crumble. Violet crumble is amazing. <laughs> Love your work, Cadbury, but... Um, yeah. Definition of 35, all class. Yeah. All James, class. James, yeah. I know you're a big fan of the 35s over the years. So they've been fantastic. Yes, it is juicy fruit, says Peter. Same three. Good to see you, Peter. I'm tuning in on YouTube. And um, Darren says, Glenallachie has just popped uh, has popped an 11-year-old port cask. If it's anything like everything else, Billy Walker is doing it. It would be well worth trying. Yes, indeed. Yes, Billy Walker is looking after Glenallachie these days. Making a single malt of it again. I'm disappointed about that, by the way. Wow. Because I had some fantastic Glenallachies and have quite a Number of them. All oh, right. And uh, now that the rest of the world knows about them, thanks to Billy, it's uh, <laughs> used to be my little secret. Though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, now everyone knows about it. All oh, right. <laughs> I, look, uh, many viewers will know my affinity and relationship with Glen Farkless. And um, not too far from Glen Farkless is the Dowens Hotel. And if you stay at the Dowens, Dowens Hotel, I went for a jog one morning. Jog, 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 jog. I was going on these country tracks, no idea, because they were all just country tracks. And you turn a corner and run down a road, and all of a sudden you're looking at Glen Glen mm. The distillery is just sitting there behind. Um, great place to visit. Awesome. I, I love that though. I love like when you're in Scotland, you do find things that you didn't even know were there, and and like that example. Mm. You know, I was I was at Lynn House. I know Lynn House. Yeah, you know Lynn House. Yeah. yeah, and I was I was just going for a walk, uh, and I was like, I had we'd been in the car most of the day, and we're we're going for a walk, and I walked up this set of stairs, and then around this bushy area, this forestry area around the side of the lake. And you walk up these tiny little steps, and suddenly there's Glen Keith. Yes, just sitting there. Yeah, it's like yeah. I didn't even know that the distiller was even sitting there. Yeah, it's tucked away. Very tucked away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, it's Lynn on Peter's computer. Okay, Lynn. Sorry, <laughs> you're on Peter's YouTube account. Well, Lynn, great for you to join us. Thank you so much. Sorry, I can't say that. What was that? Oh, uh, uh, Peter's. Peter's oh, right, right, right. It's, it's Lynn on Peter's computer. Um, winning world's best whiskey for the batch four hasn't helped. Keeping it quiet. I didn't know about that, Darren. I don't really keep track of too. I don't keep track of too many of the um the awards for um for individual whiskies. Find it a bit uh, frustrating to be. Well, honest. there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Yeah. And then you find out about it, and by the time if you want to try and track a bottle of that down, that's the hype is already there. It's all right. Uh, my tour of a stately home is uh, laying patiently waiting for its resurrection. Ooh, tour of a stately home. Do you remember the code on that one, James? I'd love to hear it because that's a uh, that's going back a bit. I couldn't remember it. And uh, Paul says the eighty two is banana lollies now. Paul, I'm glad that we got to um, replace that eighty two for you. Wouldn't have been able to experience it if we if we hadn't. That's fantastic. There's a little bit of banana lolly on that. Not not Star Wars level, but I get what you mean though. There's like yeah, I, I get I get with the banana lolly thing. Star Wars, I get but, but, like bananas. I get candied bananas right. from Starwood, and certainly yeah, some, yeah. some of the expressions do have bananas. Yeah. Um, the, the the banana lollies people talk about is really a musk. It's, it, it, they're like yellow musk sticks with, yellow with, musk with sticks. banana flavour rather than that, that strange berry flavour that a uh, pink musk sticks. <laughs> so just remind me of that. There's, you know, when something's, something's chicken flavoured. <laughs> so, no, no, it doesn't taste like chicken. Chicken chips don't taste like chicken. <laughs> they just taste like chicken chips. <laughs> I did a tasting once where, uh, <laughs> you know, I did my little call to the audience and, oh, so what do people get on this? And some bloke who was a newbie down the front said, toast of chicken. <laughs> You're not trying, sir. 
think I made, it was a Mordlock, and I made yeah. some point about it being meaty. It's not, <laughs> this is a meaty whiskey. What do people get? Let's do some chicken. Oh, that's yeah, so yeah. good. That's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's a treatable whiskey. That's true. That's, I reckon it, it's it's dangerously drinkable. The, the, our our first one, first Phil Bourbon cast, mm. had had life and punch and vitality. It had kick. You yep. uh, know, all and those were all pleasant terms. This one has that similar flavour profile, but it's just a little bit more refined and sophisticated, a little bit older, it's, it's mature. Driving, it's driving in the slow lane. Yeah. It's driving in the slow lane. But it's yeah. driving in the slow lane in a, in a very appropriate vehicle. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 One could say it's a vehicle from 1995. <sighs> uh, um, wow. But this, it, it's also just a, it's amazing to see how, how different two whiskies from very similar similar cast types uh, interact from different spirits and different times spent in them. And I was like doing that kind of stuff. You know, you know, I, I only work on cast numbers. I rarely look at, let alone remember the names. No names, right. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was talking about this being a, a walk through a flower garden. I just actually noticed flower arranging in the sunshine. They could. They also could have could have sort of been association. Maybe your eyes passed it earlier. Well, I just said it now. Oh, okay, no, fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, James V says the 35 is the first SMWS bottle I ever purchased. Mine was, uh, my first one was a 125 and it was from Grand One Andrews Tastings. What was your first ever society model you ever purchased? Purchased? Uh, well, at the time when the society first launched, uh, you received a, a bottle of, uh, from Distillery 39. Oh. And that tradition stuck around for a good five, six years. So my first society bottle was my membership bottle, which was a 39. Yeah. Do you remember the number? Uh, 39 dot dot. Oh, I can't remember. No, 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 okay. Yeah. I haven't ever, I've never opened it. It's oh, yeah, still I, at home. I've, I've, I still have my first bottle as yeah, well. I still yeah, have no, my 25. Yeah. This is so special, so I've not opened it. Um, the first one I bought, I'd like to say it was a distillery three, but I could be wrong. Mm. Yep. Uh, actually, I remember the second one I ever bought was a 129. Wow. And I bought one twenty nine dot four, no dot two. Oh, really? You yeah. got in early? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Which was a four year old whiskey, by the way. That was, yeah. and uh, I got it because uh, no one else on the table liked it. Oh, score! I know, and everyone, everyone on the table was like, "Oh, I don't really like that." I was like, "Oh, well, I'll just be quiet then and order one." Yeah, I really yeah, liked yeah. it anyway. Uh, shall we move on to the next whiskey? Shall we? Now, it's this is actually. I'm not sure. I'm gonna. I don't know if this is correct, but I think this is the first time a dot one has featured in one of our virtuals, which is kind of exciting. And it's also an exciting, uh, I think it's an exciting whiskey as well. Um, uh, oh, uh, look at the color. <laughs> the the color. Um, I'm going to reach across you there. Yep. Uh, I still have my first bottle, my uh, first ever bottle unopened, 68.18. I remember 68.18 very oh, well. We all remember 68.18. That was good fun. And big shout out to our friends over at Whiskey and Almond for picking that one out. Um, better change the the, tie, the tag here because we've now moved on to 143.1 Sea Buckthorn Tea with Honey. The name, as in your menu and the name of what's actually on the bottle, differs slightly. That does happen sometimes. So the bottle actually says Sea Buckthorn Tea with Honey. In the menu, it says Sea Bucks on Tea Time. We got as close as we possibly could. This is Seattle single malt whiskey. This is not Scotch whiskey. Uh, and I'm going to bring up the, the image. Now, this is Seattle up in the top northwest corner of the yes. USA. Northwest Seattle, Washington State, Seattle. Um, this is a, a proper barley corridor of, of the United States. And Canada, for that matter. And if, Canada. If you cross the border, yep. it's all still uh, barley, still barley yes. in, in British Columbia. Uh, and this is this is like a, a ten minute drive from Distillery One Thirty Three, which was also um, which was also bottled by the Society Wildback. Uh, something that I talked about when I presented this whiskey last night actually was uh, at the American tasting we did in Sydney uh, was just about how our our attention to detail and selection of cask and selection of spirit is a bit different from how we how others might go about things. This was a chance for the Society. To work closely with the uh, the Copperworks team, and I said the uh, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, well, uh, it's on the it's on the barrel, and um and actually and have this kind of spirit direct from them rather than sort of sourcing it elsewhere. But oh, what a shame! I misspelled whiskey. 
Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll bring that up just so you can see what Andrew's referencing. Uh, yeah, Copperworks Distilling Co. It's one of the two sort of big distilleries in um, in Seattle, along with uh, sorry, That's producing West, producing whiskey. With Westwood Westland. or Westland? I always get mixed. Westland. Up. Westland. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a couple of other distilleries in that area, but they're mostly producing um, gin and vodka. Well, uh, there's a lot, but they're all smaller craft ones. But it's, mm. it's certainly these two that have taken the product to the world on a bigger scale. Yeah. Yeah, particularly yeah. Westland. I mean, that's really mm. difficult. Mm. And they got snapped up by. Um, they did, didn't know. they? Yeah. 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 Mm. Is it uh, Adam Hoffman? Matt Hoffman. Matt Hoffman, sorry. Very close. I, I know Adam Hoffman's another colleague of ours. <laughs> I haven't got it. Don't worry about me. Um, is it Westland? No, no, it is Copperwork. Sorry. Um, interesting to see. Uh, oh, interesting about that they've spelt it whiskey with an E, not whiskey. Does Yanks use the E when it's single? I don't know how Washington State people, how Seattleans, Seattleans would, would be appreciate being called Yanks, but, you know, um, I think they do. I think they do. Um, well, I mean, look, there's, there's exceptions to every rule, isn't there? I mean, uh, look at the difference down in Tennessee between Jack Daniels and... Um, uh, God, I'm in the blank. Dickle. Yeah, Dickle, the other one, yeah. Dickle spell it without the E, don't they? Did I get that right? When, yes, they spell it without the E. Yeah. That's right, yeah. And the other one is Maker's Mark, I think, spell it without the E, whereas every other bourbon one, I could have that wrong. In fact, the, if I might, I want to get this right, but it was B5, the B5 casks that we had through, and we had a couple in Australia, uh, and that were 12, 14, 16 year old bourbons, and they were bourbons, not sour mash. They weren't Lincoln County process, they were like, oh, bourbon, okay, right, out of right. and that was the first time that bourbon had ever been bottled from that distillery, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, sweet basil on the palate, sweet basil, okay. By the way, you know you're in very special company when the, the expression Lincoln County process just gets thrown into a sentence. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, yeah. you're on the nerdiest end of the spectrum possible yeah. right now. Possibly, Welcome. yeah. Welcome, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I love the nose on this, though. It, it, it's... it's great, isn't it? Can I say I haven't tasted it yet? Mm. It's on the nose. No real clues that I've crossed the Atlantic. No, no. Mm. We're into 143.1, and it's a dot one. Now, uh, we've snuck six bottles of this up online uh, exclusively for those who are tuning in tonight. If anyone wanted to grab a bottle of this, this is a preview of what's to come. This is in the May outturn. Wow. Man, that's quite ironic. We were talking about pink mustics earlier. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Mustics. Pink mustics mm. galore. And uh, licorice all sorts. In particular, the coloured stuff in between the licorice strips. Do you get even a bit of like coffee grounds as well? Yeah, like, I do. Right in the mid palate. Yeah. Like... That's grippy, isn't it? That's mm. really grippy on the palate. That's, that's the first one on the mouth feel tonight. It's actually <laughs> drops mm. some anchors on your tongue. And... Mm. You sort of you sort of know you're in the United States on the palate. It's got that bourbon grippiness, like a. You've got high proof bourbon grippiness. Yeah, yeah. High proof. It is sixty percent as well. Let's not forget. Well, and, and his his uh, Mister Oak coming into play. So yeah. Yeah, new oak number two char. So new oak. I, I guess I'm, I'm I guessing that's virgin oak. Mm. Yeah. Yep. New, yeah, virgin oak. And and hence yes, you're, you're, that's that's that nod to that bourbon uh, bourbon yeah. style bourbon flavor. I want to show also. I, we can put this up on the website. I just want to show that this distillery. Uh, one of those distilleries that loves that sort of full transparency of what's going on. I'll show us there's, there's literally three and a half pages of this uh, available for each release where they show each brew and each mash and each distillation uh, in full detail, just in case you want to know the terminal gravity of the barley that you're Terminal having. gravity. Everything. What a wonderful term. <laughs> and the full fermentations, they are long ferments. Everything in here is between nine and 13 days uh, fermentation, which is very, very long. I mean, it's, Sort of looking at most of the time in Scotland, you're looking somewhere between three and four days. 
in Australian distilleries, a lot of them here will look at six or seven, and these guys are sort of nine to 13, which is wild stuff. And then they have all this uh, brew data and all the distillation data, which is, again, I'm only, I'm only showing one page out of it here, but the um, it just keeps going each of the, the details on the low wines and each distillation, each wash. And it, they, they provide all that information so you can know exactly what's in your glass. That's, which I think that's, that's train spotting for... Yeah, it yeah, really serious, is. Guys, it really it? is. It's, yeah, it's whiskey train spotting. Umami. Yes. Yeah. the umami word. There mm. it is. Are we playing bingo? Yeah, umami. <laughs> Tasting, you know <laughs> I mean? Tasting that bingo. <laughs> Boom. No, but it's true, though. I mean, we've had a... Yeah, it, it is that umami note. You know, I think this needs a bit of water. Okay. I'll give that a go. Yeah. yeah, sure. Doesn't do much for the nose, adding water. No. So it brings a bit more pine resin for me, pine sap, pine needles. Something, um, it's just worth remarking that compared to, say, corn, which is the basis of bourbon, or even compared to rye production, uh, barley production in uh, the United States is is very small in comparison. It's about three or four states in the northwest belt of the United States that produce 99% of their barley needs. And single malt whiskey out of America is also, uh, I mean, not a new, new thing, but is definitely becoming much more of a known thing since about 2013 onwards. Mm. We've seen a few, few more popping up here and there. You said Westwood before, Westland, Copperworks. Um, but I mean, this is also driven by some of these, some of the big distilleries that have sort of put their toe in the water a bit and tried it. Like, um, we've seen things like even Woodford putting out a single malt variety version of their spirit and things like that, which is driving that, that difference. I think is, is it's, it's a whole new category for them. And it's also interesting because they can, they don't have to do, they don't have to use virgin oak for this for single malt. They could use refill just like they do in Scotland or in elsewhere. I think it's exciting. It's an exciting time to, to be making single malt in America, and I think that's a that's a testament to that right there. Yeah, mm. I um <clears throat> I found adding a drop of water uh, brought out red apples for me. Mm. Yep, yep, red apples on the, on the very very palate. pleasant, and and that grippiness on the palate's gone as well. Mm. Like, in fact, if, if I was recommending this to anyone, I would say mm. you must add water. Yeah, yeah, you must. Sorry, have water. you should. <laughs> how how um you must have water. How solid of me. I'm sorry. I strongly recommend it. Opens up with water, says uh, <clears throat> says James V, and um, must be great oak as Seattle weather is worse than Melbourne, yet is pulled to much colour and flavour in only three years. Very likely, Darren. Very likely, very good oak indeed. Refreshingly different. Oh, yeah. Spicy. And then now deep. there's just a, a really nice, intriguing tobacco leaf note coming through. Just right on the end. Mm. Mm, very nice. Now, what's interesting for me, obviously, this is a fantastic snapshot of our engagement and involvement with this distillery, and it's a young distillery, and, and this is uh, three years. You wonder, again, in that American style, are they likely to take stock through and age it to six, seven, eight, nine, ten years? The fact that it's a it's a brand new cast means the oak is going to be very powerful up front, and you, you can't leave it in there for too long, or it's going to uh, overpower. I'd love to know what these guys' uh, business model or plan is in terms of age stock down the track. Mm, yeah. mm. I mean, but considering most bourbon in the United States is about three, four years of age. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. my point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And having, but yeah, we say that most bourbon is certainly they've, they've suddenly uh, woken up to the fact that there is a premium market, and if you age it through to greater ages, you can charge more and all the rest of it. And it's not necessarily any better. No, very true. Although I have to say, some of the some of the the Kentucky bourbons putting out the the ten year olds and twelve year olds yeah. have, have yeah. found them up. Yes, indeed. Oh, I won't disagree with you. Mm. Well, um, some great comments coming through about about all that. Um, yeah, and as I said, James V said at the end there opens up with water. I think we might press on to the uh, to the the next one. We're looking at moving into peat here, lightly peated, I should say, with sixty six dot one seven six. After you. My turn, is it? So, Matt, please tell us the name of this fantastic whiskey. <laughs> this is 66.176. <laughs> 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 
So this, this, this has a wonderful name that is, is not in English and uh, neither of us are going to be brave enough to have a crack at it tonight. Neither uh, of us I, speak I, French. I did German at school, <laughs> so I, I, I am of no help here whatsoever. <laughs> there it is. For anyone who wants to try and say it, that's the name there. Um, the rough translation into English is, which is very rough because it doesn't make any sense actually even in French, is I am a lumberjack and I am okay. And I am well, or I'm okay. It's one of the two. Or I am good. Je vais bien. What is that bien? Probably good. I am good. So I am a lumberjack. And I'm good. This has had a. Uh, this has had twelve years in a bourbon hogshead, and then two years in a second fill red wine barrique. As I've said before, barrique is a fancy word for barrel. Indeed. Uh, but you got to say it with a Gallic shrug. Buddy. 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 As in it, it could have been finished. It might not have been. We don't know. <laughs> so it's, um, we've got a very generous allocation of this and it's a very special finish on it. We had 54 to share around to members, which is great. It's a Highland peated whiskey. These 66s often have that uh, rich uh, but very dry peat note to them, which is quite often different to what you see out of Isla at the very least. You see those much more sort of mossy, boggy, uh, different kind of peat notes. Questions just come through from Darren, and it's actually for the, the whiskey before, so I'm just going to backtrack. Just yeah, no, it's all good. So it's Darren good. asked the question, number two char is a deeper, darker char than one. That's his question. Is two yep. is, greater than one? Yep. Any idea what numbers are used, I highest level of char? Now, I don't claim to be an expert in this. I believe I'm right in saying the star goes from one to four. Mm. Do you agree? I think it's one to four. One to four, and four being the heaviest. And so there have been some very famous whiskey releases that made a, uh, a, a marketing point of, of, of the level of char. Ardbeg was the, the famous one with Ardbeg Alligator, which was the number four char, and they named it that because when you char the oak to a number four, uh, the charring is so great that it creates what looked like alligator skin, hence that's where Ardbeg Alligator, alligator came from. So, yes, two is greater than one. Mm. And, and mm. on a scale of one to four, that tells you where it sits. Mm -hmm. Just going back to the 66 for a second, I very much agree on this being in the lightly peated on the nose. It's it's almost not mm. in a way it is, but it's almost it's just so subtle. I don't mean very subtle, know, yeah, very subtle. Yeah. Like, you know how some peated whiskies they just leap out and you go, yeah. you feel like you've been charred on the nose. This is like, and that for me has always been the appeal with this distillery, actually. Yeah, I, I, very, I, yeah, I, I love the fact that. It, it very rarely does it ever get into the realm of, of, of the Isla levels of peat, and yet it's got this. It peat. has. It has. It has. It has yes. Said, yeah. Rarely. Rarely. Not never. Not never. But in that in that lower level, it can really go from something subtle and intriguing to something you know quite meaningful and mm. uh, almost Tabasco levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd agree with that. Wow. There's a sweetness coming through on the nose that is just holding hands with the peat and they're skipping happily down to the park together. It is a bit talisgrish, but good. Peat and sweet. Paul says Ren and Stimpy. I'm the odd one out in my generation. I just, I never got Ren and Stimpy. I, uh, it. I thought it was so stupid. I think you have to be really high to enjoy it. I think that's the whole Ren and Stimpy uh, thing. I think problem. you have to be off your face to yeah, enjoy Ren and Stimpy. Uh, I mean, look, I like a good fart joke as much as the next one. But, uh, <laughs> but half an hour of fart yeah. jokes pushing it. <laughs> Sweet and Pete is right, though, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the second fill red wine cask for just two years, it's not a first fill red wine. It's a second fill. It hasn't overpowered the peat. It hasn't overpowered the spirit. You can even tell from the colour. It is not, uh, you know, it's not some deep, rich red Color, you could have. That, that's a glorious pale, very pale white yeah. wine sort of color, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the the cask hasn't overly encumbered the spirits; just so added a it's nice like a pale Saint Blanc or Chablis. <laughs> Pick one. It's <laughs> Monte. <laughs> it's a French name. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> but <Barique. laughs> <Barique. laughs> it doesn't matter. Oh, man. I like that. Oh, let's Ooh. just stop here. Mm. Yeah, we're done. That was good. We're done. Thank you for joining. No, this is, that's, that's delightful. My goodness. Uh, I might have to, um, I might have to get one of those. <laughs> I really enjoy that. And I'm, I'm actually not a huge peated whiskey drinker. I mean, I enjoy my peated whiskeys, but I don't reach them for them as often as non-peated whiskeys generally. In winter, I do a lot more, but 
Um, if I enjoy a peated whiskey, it's definitely in that kind of realm. I'm not a huge fan of the heavily peated sort of extreme whiskeys uh, end of the spectrum, but a bit more, com bit more complexity and nuance than. I've got the uh, the Facebook group on my phone here. I can't. I'm not seeing the Facebook page, and James has got a comment that I can't quite read from here. Can you put that up for our viewers? For a light peated nose, it has such a multitude of aromas. My first split second nose response was a freshly opened jar of honey. Oh, good call. Mm. That smell as soon as you open it. Yeah, leatherwood honey. Leatherwood, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely. 14 year old as well. We've had a we've had a string of different, I mean, the age statements we've seen out of Distillery 6 and 6 as well has been very, like, very varied, I should say. Oh, uh, Joel's made it just following on from your comment. Joel's just said here, uh, I'm the same, Matt. I also feel you go through, uh, sorry, I also feel you go through stages between drinking and not drinking bitter whiskey. Very much so. I have that yep. uh, morning, night, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do they call it? The. You know how they like, say there's a certain part of the day is coffee and the other half of the day is whiskey? You know that sort of like the transition point? I, I've heard rumours of such things. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, Joel, yeah, I get what you're saying, Joel. I, I, I go through phases of enjoying Peter whiskey and not enjoying it. And I, I, there was a good, I think, a good 12 months where I didn't even have any Peter whiskey. Wow. No, for real. I just, there wasn't Oh, there was that year you were cranky. Yeah, I was, I was angry the whole year. I was cranky. It must have been like 2016 or something. But I wasn't really into my peated whiskey. And I, I still kept buying a few bottles of it here and there, knowing that I want to come back to it. But I just didn't. Um, You go through phases of it. And I think coming into winter. Oh, I was just about to say, I, my peated whiskey consumption goes up massively in, yeah. uh, in winter. In winter, it jumps up a fair bit for mm. me as well. Especially if you get a, just like a, a nice big glass of it and you can sit on it for hours. Yeah. Just like watching something on TV or doing something or doing some yeah. work. It's just something that can be. Enjoy it on a cold evening. Uh, I'm, I'm a big Aussie rules fan, and I, I have a, a, my, my team in Melbourne that I follow, and I, I find a need to sit down in front of the telly for two hours what, watching a footy game with a, a really good peated whiskey. It's just a very pleasant way to spend your Saturday afternoon or evening. Yeah, very agreed. 66.176 was a name that I'm not going to try and pronounce, but it roughly translates to I'm a lumberjack and I'm good. Fine. Okay. Yes. Um. And, and thank you, thank you, Matt Wooler, for saying what is this uh, stream business? I've stumbled across tonight. Across tonight. It is um, Molten Magic for those who are playing along. It's the Molten Magic virtual tasting with the set, the tasting sets that went out for, with our April outturn. I'll tell you what, Matt, you've opened yourself up for a comment there, but I'll I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep that one to myself. Uh, sweet flavor bomb on the palate, says James V. Yep. Well, I, I, the sweetness is just extraordinary. And hope your team wins a lot, Andrew. Sadly, not this year for me, mate, but anyway. Wow. Very nice indeed. That is, I, I'm really enjoying this on so many levels. I think it's a nose, uh, you know, I, I, I put a lot of emphasis on, on the nose. Um, it, it's, it's something I get a lot of enjoyment out of. I could just keep sniffing that for ages and ages. And then when you take it through to the palate, it delivers on so many levels. I have a sweet tooth. I love I love sweeter whiskies, and I love it. And you've heard me say this a lot. I love it when you can still taste the malt. Whiskey is made from mm, barley, mm. and and if you've ever had the privilege of, of tasting lightly peated dried malt, the actual malt barley, the very stuff that they're about to make the whiskey with, it is the most glorious, crunchy, sweet dessert, smoky element. And when they do the whole fermentation, distillation, stick it in a barrel for fourteen years. And it comes out 14 years later and you can still taste that malt. That for me is such a winner and I'm getting it on this. And it's not just all cask. No. That's the thing. No. It doesn't, it's not. Um. Oh. It's a Monty Python reference. Oh, God. Did I have, oh, sorry, I thought we all knew that. No, I didn't have that. I, I watched all oh, the Monty right. Python. I just didn't get the reference tonight. All right, fine. Okay, sorry. I, uh, all right. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. Yes, Monty Python Flying Circus song. Yes, sorry. I'll see myself out now. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Originally sung by Michael Palin, and yet Eric Idle is often credited with it. Oh. See, they different. Depends on uh, who performed it. Depending on there was the original uh, TV series, then there was the and now for something completely different version of it, and then there's the Life of the Hollywood Bowl. 
Not that I know much about Monty Python. No. no. <laughs> He's only got a record in his head right now of every time it's been performed. Yes. Um, and James V says, the SMWS Ardmores always deliver. I they do, James. Think, yeah. I, I don't know what an Ardmore is, but I'm sure it's Distillery 66. <laughs> um, uh, it might have some relation to the distillery, but no, James, I'm just kidding. It, it, it is, it, they do deliver. They, they're, always, they're always exciting and they're always enjoyable. And I think, uh, I, I don't think I'm wrong in saying they're often overlooked because, again, that thing that people are always hunting, the, the superstar codes, as I say, you know, the threes, your 33s, your 53s, your 29s, people look for those when they look at Peter whiskies and they might overlook things like 66 or uh, we get lots of different Peter whiskies from the mainland of Scotland now and even internationally from some great Peter whiskies we've had from England, from That's India. The Swedish one. Though. The Swedish one. Yeah, yeah the 145.1. Uh, that, that, was a, that was a really interesting whiskey. So there's mm -hmm. like... An, Happiness is a warm goer. The one, oh, oh, yes, that was yes, lovely. Yes, yeah, that was yeah, lovely. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> Darren, comment of the night. That, that's one for the Python, the Python fans amongst us. But, uh, very, very good call. Well played, Darren. Um, uh, my God, I got that. look. I got that instantly. Says Will. I thought you were just avoiding copyright infringement. <laughs> Yes, no, I, I the one I was the one that missed it. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. All good. Um, this is sorry, sorry, returning to the topic at hand here. That has now just gone and sweetened out again, and it's biscuity and cereally and lots of other words ending in e. That's <laughs> and e. Yeah, <laughs> it's more e. <laughs> uh, sorry, I was going to pick up on a point you made. I, yeah. I, I cannot endorse what Matt said uh, heavily enough. People get their outturn and the peat heads among us go straight to the ones with the green colour coding. Yep. Uh, look at green, lightly peat, 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 peat. Yep. And, and they're looking for that word Isla in region, Isla, Isla, Isla. And then they see Highlands for, for this one and go, oh, it's not for my it can't be as good. That is the biggest mistake you can make. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Trust the flavour profiles. Don't worry about which distillery it came from, what code it carries, what region it came from. Just look at the flavour profile. If it says peat it, you're in the right ballpark. And, and read those tasting notes. I mean, some of them really are sort of wild and don't make any sense. And that's, I mean, and sometimes you go, actually, no, I do get that. I get that. And, I, and I'm really interested in that. So trust the flavor profile. As Andrew said, trust the tasting notes. They're there for a reason. We would like to publish them all in every app turn. Um, oh, that was good. That's very enjoyable whiskey. I'm with you. I might need to uh, acquire a bottle of yeah. that. <laughs> Um, that one is also online at the moment, and it was in our um, April out term. So that was part of the Molten Magic series of casks that we released for April. And there's two less now than there were half an hour ago. Very much so. I, I am going to get one of those. As I said to Andrew, I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of heavily peated whiskies. I'm, I'm into that uh, that style of more lightly peated, nuanced kind of peated whiskies, which are enjoyable to drink, rather than ones that just sort of bash you around the head with peat. It's like I say the same thing with good beer. You know, good beer can be hopped, but these quadruple IPA, imperial, quadruple imperial IPAs that are just hops, a bit one-dimensional, and you can still taste the malt in that after 14 years. Yeah. And they can taste the distillery character in there, which is great. Uh, shall we? We shall. Now, Matt, tell the viewers at home about this amazing special whiskey. <laughs> tell them. Tell them the price, son. Now, I'm just going to bring up the next, uh, next little... Because that's a great graphic, by the way. It is. And, and, and going, returning with the Monty Python thing, there's a little bit of the Life of Brian um, theatre theater poster about that one. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I can see that, yeah. I didn't miss that one. Thanks, thanks, crowd. Um, <laughs> the top is blended batch 11. This is a, a blended malt scotch whiskey and marriage of bourbon, hogsheads and selected Pedro Jimenez butts and bottled like all of our um, blended uh, whiskies. At fifty percent, hey, don't count the um, the blended cognac. That was a bit of a different proof. That was forty something percent. But this is um, a blended malt scotch whiskey, not to be confused with a blended whiskey. Andrew, what's the difference? Oh goodness, are we going to go there? Well, no, let's, let's just let's cover some I'll, of the basics. I'll, I'll, I'll come back in a moment, just while you leave that on the screen for a second. A, a marriage of bourbon hogsheads and selected Pedro Jimenez butts. How do you feel to be unselected? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you didn't quite make the cut. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like the the schoolyard when you know they're picking teams and you're the you're the last person left. You've not been selected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not selected. Oh, oh, uh, 
Anyway, um, so the question was the difference between blended whiskey and blended malt whiskey. Not to be confused. Not to be confused. Are we interested? Shall I? Shall I? Yeah, I think we should. It? I think we should touch on it. I mean, All of it. So it goes back to uh, I wrote an article about this on Whiskey and Wisdom um, about uh, the the infamous Cardu moment, um, which is a long story which I won't bore you with. But at the end of the day, we have a blend traditionally always meant malt whiskey and grain whiskey. So whiskey made from malted barley, whiskey made from wheat or corn blend the two together, that was a blended whiskey, and it meant that thing for many years. If you were to take malt whiskey from one distillery and malt whiskey from another, that historically was known as a pure malt or a vatted malt, and those two terms got banned in, I can't remember the exact year now, 2005, six, whatever it was, when our friends at Cardu uh, tried to pull a Swifty. You can read all about that. I won't bore you tonight about it. Um, but the term pure malt and vatted malt got banned and replaced with blended malt whiskey. So it was a blend of whiskies from lots of distilleries, but malt, 100% malt and barley. That's the term. And that's what the society's put together here with the tarpe. Just do me a favour for a second. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Look how thick it is. It's just positively oozing down the oh, sides of the it glass. It is oily, isn't it? That's a very oh. viscous spirit straight away. That's yeah, the first thing yeah, I just yeah. noticed how slowly it's just leaching down the sides of the glasses. Wow, I give it well. yeah, you're quite right. Yeah. That, that's far more than usual. Um, Indeed. Just to give you a bit of context about this whiskey, uh, I'm going to bring up our, our other screen for a second here. This is the Tar Pit, and, and as Andrew talked about, it's a blended malt uh, constructed by Ewan Campbell. Hello, Ewan. In our team. He sometimes has a rather ferocious beard like that, sometimes doesn't, but that's how he looked when that photo was taken, and he's busy there doing a bit of blending and actually testing samples, seeing what works together. And he'll sometimes go through uh, dozens of iterations to find the right blend to create these, these blended additions. And um, it's an opportunity for us to play around with spirit, play, have a bit of fun with it, and keep flavour as, as our focus, as we always do. And that's that's the important part of this, is that the flavour is at the focus rather than worrying about single cask this or single malt this. is just It's flavour that he's created and blended together and this is the 11th iteration. It started with, well, uh, I sort of officially started with Exotic Cargo, um, which would have been about 2016 or so. Yeah, that'd be right. And then um, we had Pete Ferry after that, and and now we're up to the 11th version of these, and we've had quite a few in between, old-fashioned. Um, more on the pipeline too. More on the pipeline. Yes, they're still coming through. They're, he's still working on these blends, and they're still very exciting to see Ewan's work um, come through. And, and bottle of 50%, which I think yeah. uh, there was another independent bottler who uh, made a, a virtue of that with their range. And I always thought, you know, and, and their guff at the time used to be it was the perfect sweet spot between, you know, car strength and, and, and 40 and, and it allowed the best of both worlds. And I think there's some truth to that. There's some truth to that, yeah. Oh, wow. That's fun. There's one word that keeps coming back for all these, these blended malts, and that's, you know, they're, they're imminently quaffable. They're drinkable. They're fun. They're, they're not, they're, they don't uh, raise too many eyebrows. They're not, you see, I, I'd say that the previous whiskey, it's about as peated as the previous whiskey in many ways. It's not hugely peated. It's a bit more peated, I'd say. But that one was, you'd want to contemplate and take a bit of time with. This one doesn't need, you don't need to take too much time with it. It's enjoyable. What, what I'm finding fascinating about this whiskey, and this is just me, but the, the in, as you, if I was writing official tasting notes, the peat hits you straight away and then that sherry oak comes up right behind and, in fact, uh, overtakes it in a straight. Mm. And and the finish is all, that's not all, but it's mostly that 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 sherry oak influence mm. for me. Mm. And, the, and the peat really starts to just disappear back into the, into the background of the, of the shot. Uh, is this a blended malt or a small batch? It's a blended malt. It's a blended malt. They're, we'll use probably use the word small batch if it's um, genuinely a small batch of a single malt, like something you're going to be seeing very soon in uh, <laughs> next month's outside. Mm -hmm. But that's a small batch, but this is a blended malt. Wow. You use the word fun. It is a fun whiskey. It's fun. Yeah. 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 This is the kind of bottle you could take to a party and share around. Yeah. It's not a... Now, let's talk about painted whiskey and sherry casks. Sure. Because that is a marriage that does not always work. 
And in fact, there's been some disasters through uh, by some of uh, the, the official bottlings from some of the distilleries. But as uh, as our good friend Tony Chapman used to say, when, and still does, still does. <laughs> <laughs> um, when it, they get it right, oh my God, it seems. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, there was. And a, it's hard to get right though. It's hard to get right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there was a discussion on. I think it might have been the Society uh, Facebook group at some point or on one of the things, and it was. Um, some examples of where that they got it right. Mm. What, what are the what are the examples when? And, and sorry, sorry. The question was which distilleries do it better than others. Mm. And uh, you and I actually had some input in that and differed. I seem to recall. Okay. And and, and I we I, do sometimes. Well, I, I overlooked the obvious one, which was Bamore, because mm. you look at, at mm. some, you know some of the most fun, like the Black Bamore was obviously Bamore into Sherry Cask and yep. Bicentenary and all those sorts of things. But for me, that's a bit of ancient history now. I think when you, when you look at the distilleries doing it uh, these days, um, when Ardbeg get it right, mm. that is unbelievable. And some mm. of the society Ardbegs uh, did come from. Um, we've had some sherry Ardbeg yeah. casks through. Yeah. Uh, sorry, we've had some sherry 33s through. We haven't there. Wouldn't know what distillery it is. Sorry. No. no. That's 2 0. <laughs> Hey, hey, we did one which was like four, four <laughs> nil, so once, like months ago. So, you know what? I can take that. I can take a two nil. Uh, it's like walking a tightrope. You uh, want to expand on that, Darren? I, I think that's a fascinating comment. Uh, please feel free to post through some, um, I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate. That's fun. Mm. That's good. Very, very drinkable. That's what the blended malts are. They're fun. They're, they're drinkable. They're, they're shareable. They're an experimentation from Ewan's cabinet of goodies. And I think it's great that we can share this around with members. And we've got a lot of this one. Well, I was just about to say, one of the great things about this is that you can share the love. When you're bottling a single cask, particularly, you know, a, a bourbon barrel level, there might only be 180 to 220 bottles for the entire world. The beauty of, of these projects by the society is it's obviously a lot of casks contributing to, to the vatting. And as a result, we get over a thousand bottles mm. uh, and mm. then because there's a thousand bottles we get more here in australia and so i think this one from memory brought 90 in yes 90 uh, 90, 90 bottles. Yep. correct um yep. and we've put uh i think it's 12 bottles up at seven o'clock tonight for all those who are joining the tasting so you're welcome to jump online and grab one of these now ahead of when it's released which is not next month so it'll be um well it's not in the may out i should say and it's um but you want to want to grab one of these there's a few online right now and it's yeah, I understand. One thousand four hundred and forty-six bottles were produced in this blend, so and it, it, from the experimentation. Uh, I wasn't going to say it. Uh, um, uh, he's made the original comment here. Paul Hamilton Brown has made a point about um, a commercial expression that um, he doesn't yeah. say the distillery name. It's fine. LP. I don't know what right. that is. What's LP? Yeah. No idea. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's a long play vinyl album. Isn't it? <laughs> but uh, oddly enough, Paul, that was exactly. The expression I had in my mind, thinking about ones that haven't worked, and that was a, a good example of it. Mm. Did it once? That distillery has done some yeah, amazing no, ones. I mean that, that, that one. Not, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Not not that release though. Oh yes. Now, Darren, you picked up one of those recent twenty nines. There was a sherry twenty nine we released, the um, roaming in the gloaming. Uh, I would argue that's one of the best twenty nines I think we've ever had. Mm. Uh, it's and in fact, Andrew and I did it for one of our virtuals. Um, there was there was a balanced share as Sherry and Pete right in the middle of that one. That was a lovely cask indeed. Didn't we? We had that in the virtual and also the Sydney tasting. We did that Sydney as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any idea what codes these casks come from? No. Uh, if, well, we got a hint. They said it was between one and a hundred. Yeah, <laughs> or one and one hundred and forty. <laughs> well, it was, it, no, not not directly. No, um, and it. It's it could be a mixture of distilleries and mixture of casks. That's the whole idea behind it. Um, <laughs> Mark, you're an observant bugger. <laughs> an LP guitar, Andrew. Yes, I do. Yeah. That's appeared on my Instagram once. He he's seen it. He's Mark, seen you, it. You are okay. Well, I remember you. I remember that photo you posted of your guitar. And I post a guitar. It. I own nine yeah. guitars. Yeah, but, but like the guitar and drums kind of. Yeah, but I've only put one up with the LP on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bloody hell, Mark. Well done, sir. Sorry, well, that, was, that, was, that was a compliment, not a... Yeah, yeah, that was... Uh, you're, you're observant. Um, yeah. That's more than magic. That was a magical night. Yeah, that was really good. That was, that was a lot of fun. That was, and 
they were, they were five very, very different whiskeys. So, I mean, they always are, but this is just, I really love that progression as well as we got through. That that was an example where I think the tasting order was just perfect. I yeah, would, I, yeah. I would not do that any other way around. We have done some in the past where we thought, oh, we should have done that before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is this is really good to see them mm. in that kind of order. Uh, before, uh, before we go, um, I'll just let you know that we are on the cusp uh, of the uh, next our turn. It is the 7th of May, Friday, 7th of May. The first Friday of the month, of course, uh, is a uh, – I mean, I've got my banner wrong here again. Sorry. Um, the first Friday of the month, of course, is the 7th. It's a very late first Friday for May, and that's our uh, turn for May. That's the festival's out turn. It's festival time. You're the first to see the cover right now on here. Uh, so this hasn't been seen elsewhere yet, which is great. And, of course, uh, it's also, like I say – the, we will have another virtual tasting, which we'll be doing the Scotland Festival's virtual tasting with the special festival casks in it. Join us live on Friday, 21st of May, 7.30 p.m. with Andrew and I talking all things whiskey about the festivals, about great whiskies, and we're going to be sharing them about as we go along. Uh, oh, that was that was sort of my, my final slide, I guess. <laughs> I should also mention that also on the, um, uh, on the 30th of April this month, which is next Friday, is when tickets for champs go on sale. <laughs> We'll be talking about this more in the coming week, which will be really great because it's uh, 30th April, Friday, next Friday, is when the early bird member tickets and those who have signed up to the AMWTC website um, will get their tickets, will get their offer for tickets straight away. We've got a Champs exclusive cask. We've got special partners involved. Uh, we've got a great venue of the Art Gallery of New South Wales, and we're looking forward to having the Champs back. It was uh, delayed champs from last year when I didn't get a chance to go ahead due to reasons which are extremely, extremely obvious at this point. We don't even say the COVID word anymore. Need more 29, Paul, I agree. And um, how do you set the order? Friday afternoon drinks at head office? <laughs> no, Thursday afternoon. Thursday afternoon drinks at head office. <laughs> um, and, yes, Mark says AMWTC. There it is. It's back. Oh, the Whiskey Champs are back. We're really five excited. Of, five of the greatest letters ever put together in that order. Five of the greatest letters. <laughs> Um, thank you, gents, says James V. Thank you so much. Taking my tray of whiskeys to watch the rest of Mel versus Richmond. Who's oh. going to win? Oh, well, the, the punters would say Richmond. Punters would say Richmond. Melbourne haven't been doing well. Um, I want to give a shout out to this guy. This is your fourth tasting event in a row, is it not? Yeah, this week. This week. Yeah. Four in a row. Four in a row. Well, well, well done, sir. This, thank this, you very much. This is why I hand it on the mantle. Um, <laughs> No, well, well done, sir. It's been a long it's, week. It's, it's been a long week. It's, it's tasty whiskey. This history. man has been spruiking society and our wonderful whiskeys to a lot of people in a lot of different places. And uh, well done, sir. Rock and roll. Yeah, thank you so much. Doing on a Saturday night. night. And thanks for coming along tonight. Thank you. This has been great. This always. Well, as our friend would say, yeah. uh, always a pleasure, never a chore. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. We're going to call it there for now. And we'll see you all again soon. And thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. See you again.